community, but also go out there and partner up with them. Wake a few of them up. Drake, let's That's take a let's take real. this probably for interrupting. Let's take a break for a minute because Eva has a very important announcement about the Bill Woods videos. Okay. Eva? Hi there. Thank you. Hold on one second. Hi. So we have been diligently um, (laughs) wrestling with our Internet connection and had to jump to two different um, locations in order to try and upload them. And we're almost finished here. Um, Just wanted to let everybody know the uh, information is definitely of a sensitive nature and uh, we t- we wanted to take our time to kind of gather our thoughts. Well, Bill wanted to take his time to gather his thoughts and kind of make sure that he had addressed everything um, as completely as possible and as concise and, and directly as possible. And um, so it is an hour and 20 long video that we we're having to um, now break into chunks. So there'll be multiple um like part one, part two, part three, part four. And um, it is um, information around specifically one person. Um, and it would, it leans towards uh, the category that Drake had mentioned that there are some people who the general public would expect will be arrested. And that, in fact, all along they've been kind of playing. Um, kind of documenting and um, gathering information so that when this day and age came, there was actually some clear documentation that could be put behind allegations around who is and isn't needing to be held accountable. So it's very um, impacting information and definitely a message that kind of caught Bill off guard. <laughs> so uh, we thank everybody for their patience, and we're really sorry. Uh, we, um, you know, we're not really set up, bit of gypsies right now, so we're not really set up to handle a large uh, file of an hour and 20 minutes. So thanks again, everyone, for your patience, and um, I hope that this is reaching as many people as possible to understand that it is coming. It's almost completely loaded. We should be done in, like, uploading the links to uh, Facebook. Okay, so he's posting the links on Facebook now as we speak. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. So on Facebook, we'll put it on Dave's uh, chat and also our Tree of Liberty website. So everybody can go to Facebook, our Tree of Liberty, or Bill Wood, Bill Brockbrader, um, and Freedom Reigns. We'll put it on that one too? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to try and put it on as many different... um, venues as possible so it gets out there. <laughs> so thank you. Is that our, our tree of liberty dot com? The real tree of liberty dot com. Well say that so I can write it in here. <laughs> okay, Bill's gonna send you the links. Okay, and I'll post them. Okay. Alright, thank you, Pops. You're welcome, sweetie. Tell and thank him, you. Give him a hug for me now that I stepped on his big toe. I will do. And um, Drake, I just wanted to say thank you. And Deatra, um, I really like what Deatra had to say about um, the mentality. And it's kind of um, it parallels the story of the caterpillar who's like consumer mentality more and more and more. It's never enough, never enough. Always looking for more leaves to eat and consume, 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 consume. And they gorge themselves till they hit this point of, you know, transformation where they have to go into their cocoon. And if we help them out of the cocoon, once they've turned into butterflies, their wings actually won't form because they have to struggle in order to, to be able to actually fly. They have to go through that. So I really loved that story about your son. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Eva. Alrighty. As soon as Bill gives me the information, I will post it in the chat room. And I Very can't good. do it till then, folks. Learn <laughs> patience. If nothing else, learn patience. 
<laughs> well, thanks for um, fielding all those questions, too, Pop. You're welcome. No. Thank you, Eva. All right. Back to you guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you. That's good to know. Okay. Uh, Drake, did you want to continue where you were, where you left off? Well, basically what I was going to, what I was running to is that, uh, um, there's a little saying, it's called, if it's to be, it's up to me. And I'm going to, you know, people seem to lack, uh, the capability of seeing responsibility beyond their, uh, their own world. And, the responsibility uh, that I see is that for those who are uh, lucky enough to get uh, uh, and hold and have a job, uh, they get up in the morning at a certain time. They get ready, uh, depending on what your routine is from there. You try to get to work on time. Uh do something while you're there, and when you get done, you go home. Now, it doesn't matter if you got uh, um, responsibilities other than yourself. That's not the point of this. The point of this is this. Uh, if you have enough self-discipline to follow that sort of routine, um, you should have enough self-discipline to extend yourself beyond your limit, your seemingly limitations. I say seemingly because everybody poses limitations upon themselves according to what they feel like they should be, where they should be, and this sort of thing. One of the basics in psychology is that you are exactly where you think you're supposed to be, both in life, stature, standing, etc. Now, so, that leads to one other thing. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit new, and it is different from what you are used to. It breaks the routine. One of the routines is the government gets worse, we get less, and people go hungrier or end up with second cars instead of new ones and all that. That goes to the me, 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 but it also goes to the fact that you... Each individual has not extended themselves quite far enough to try to make a difference. And in terms of um, being able to make a difference, um, that difference is the extension of yourself beyond whatever it is you have in the way of a routine. It could be just simply spending a few minutes talking to somebody next door. It's not, uh, doesn't have anything to do with um, being your own man. It doesn't have anything to do with your standing, your stature. It don't matter if that person's poor, rich, whatever. It doesn't matter. Go talk to them anyway. You might just find that they have had the same kind of problems and <laughs> people think somebody's well off. And they may have the same problems you do, but the numbers they're dealing with is different. Mm -hmm. Their light bill may be what your mortgage payment is. But the same sorts of problems are beginning to encroach on them as well. This is where the support for things comes into play. It's not just the average everyday person who's having these problems. The extraordinarily wealthy are now not extra so extraordinarily wealthy as they were. The next step in this is to reduce them to, from well to middle class and the middle class just barely exists why because you're not getting paid a rate that fits with what is considered middle class standards mm. I read an article in a magazine about hunger and food uncertainty now in the past, people lived on the land, so they had something to eat. It might have just been beans, but they did have something to eat. At least this keeps someone from starvation. Nowadays, 
some 50% of the population re- re- relies on food stamps. Mm. The reason they do is that they make like $11,000 a year. Now, what you think about that? That's less than a grand a week or a grand a month. That's less than 250 a week. Okay? You tell me how you're going to survive on that. I'll tell you right now, not to, in today's market, you ain't. The uh, median is 22.8, 23.8 for the poverty level. Okay? People who uh, live on farms and whatnot survive on less than that. People who, and these are these uh, Mexicans everybody's so worried about and concerned with, um, <laughs> those people who are out there doing the picking make half the poverty level. Now take $11,000 and divide by two, you get $5,500. Well, Jake, well, <laughs> Jake, you're, Jake, you're talking about people that, you know, making the, what, 11000 or less a year and what. I raised a family, well, was raising a family of four, now raising a family of three again, thank God, um, on $800 a month. And we don't have to go on food stamps because we grow and we raise our own food. We also grow and raise enough that we can share with our neighbors that what we don't, I, what I don't personally grow, my neighbors grow and we can share, share back and forth. Um, so really, honestly, in my personal opinion, food stamps are not even a necessity. And that ought to be testimony to exactly what we're talking about in terms of community. Mm-hmm. People at that level can also eat decently if you got a community involvement. Several neighbors or whatever, they grow a little bit of this, and somebody grows a little of that, and somebody's better at doing one kind of crop than they are than someone else is of doing another. And my goodness, look at that pumpkin or whatever. And you can make pies and custards and uh, pickles and all kind of things out of out of pumpkin. Uh, as just as an example, but this is a good example. My grandmother had a small farm. She she had enough acreage. She could raise a couple of head of beef. She'd have a couple of calf, calves. She'd fatten them calves up and have them butchered. You got veal. She'd wait until the uh, cow had given enough milk to uh, pay for itself, and she'd have that thing butchered. We was all the time eating really good. And then you, of course, have the crops. She had a garden, and, I mean, it was fairly sized. Um, she grew almost everything that we ate, and... People, <laughs> the difference in the taste uh, is extraordinary. The difference in how good it is for you is also extraordinary. But here's the crux of it. You're talking 800 a month, and you're living okay, and you don't got to fi- bother with the government. That's, that's, that's perfect. That's excellent. I applaud you for that. Uh, I remember a story. Well, hold on a minute. I heard a story the other day. And I'm not going to say who, but I heard about this grandma who's got health problems, bad back and a few other things, working with granddaughters to load and unload and install an air conditioner. Now, I want everybody, ladies and gentlemen, to think about that. I want everybody to consider that they don't have to ask for help. We've got it. No problem. This is called extension beyond what you're supposed to be able to do in whatever form it takes. It could be that air conditioner. It could be growing crops. It can be uh, coordinating. Maybe you're a master at that. Sometimes you don't even know the talent you got. Somebody will discover it. I guarantee you that. Uh, (laughs) But localization, okay, the idea of it is to give people their deserved freedom. People deserve to be free. They do not deserve to be enslaved. Consequently, what you got is you have a system right now that enslaves people. This is what we're attempting to do away with. Now, as we do away with this, a lot of the convenience that being took care of, the mothering, uh, the chaperone, um, the nanny state, however you want to look at that, that's going. Mm Mm-hmm. I want everybody to understand, a lot of the federal government is not even going to be there when this is over. That's the importance of it. 
The reason being is that that is one of the major problems that this country has, both in freedom and having people's needs seen to. I don't mean that you get off scot-free and somebody hands it to you. 